All right, we're in lot 121 Carolina Lakes today. We're putting in an extreme energy efficient foam package into this house. This allows us to have a, a great energy savings uh, on your power bill, we're talking about $58 a month. Um, typical power bill on a home like this, too, is probably about 150 to 150. So you're saving maybe $100 a month just on your power bill alone and the savings we have um, heating and cooling costs. So this is two win with Healthy Homes insulation. Uh, two, tell us a little bit about the foam and the difference uh, between a healthy home and a fiberglass insulated home. The difference in a wall cavity, when we're looking here and we're looking between the two by fours of a wall, normally on a house you'll see insulation between it. I see that this is 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 complete formed and hard against the wall. How is that different from fiberglass? Well, foam insulation address heat transfer in more than one way. Fiberglass only addresses conductive heat transfer. When you when system. you mean heat transfer, were you talking about the heat from inside or outside of the house? Both heat gains from outside coming in during the uh, summertime or heat gain or loss. Uh, from the inside going out during the winter time. Right. Um, a <coughs> foam, insulation, foam insulation does an excellent job adjusting the conductive heat transfer. There's two inches of foam in this wall has an R value of 14. R14 of uh, foam in this wall will far outperform uh, as much as an R30 of fiberglass depending on the environment and where you're at. Plus, foam insulation seals up the house, so it eliminates the, the unwanted heat gain and loss through air movement, which account for almost 40% of the total heat gain and loss. When you mean air movement, you mean like leaks in the house? Correct. So if you've ever done a remodeling job before and you've torn off a piece of sheetrock or an exterior side and you see pink insulation that's black or brown, it means that it's kind of works like a filter does and sucks out. you got a passageway of air that's been flowing through the house in and out. That's correct. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, so those are you address two things. You got air. You got the, the it stops air movement because it seals up a cavity. Um, unlike uh, unlike a fiberglass insulation, which kind of filters the air as it goes through. Um, and then you're then you're you're blocking the radiant heat coming through the wall. Radiant heat in the wall. There's not a negligible amount of radiant heat in the wall to speak of. Uh, how up in, up in your attic, right. there is a significant amount of radiant heat gain and loss. Uh, what's happening in a typical attic is the sun radiates its energy onto the shingle, and most shingles are darker in color. Right. And we absorb all that energy and then heats up in excess of 140 to 180 degrees. That temperature, that heated roof, then re radiates its energy back inward creating what's called a hot, uh, a hot box. Right. Your attic becomes the size of 130, 140 degrees on a typical summer day. And it's, you know, you know, as you and I both know that it's not that hot outside. It's the radiant energy being converted back inward. Um, so, in a, so in an attic, like in the summertime, when I go up there to, to uh, put something in the attic in the summer, I open up that, that hot, hot blast comes shooting through that the attic door. We won't feel that in this home because because the upstairs is, is ceiling is actually foamed in. Is that correct? Correct. Tip, in a typical foam insulated attic, the temperature difference between the attic and the floor below it should be no more than five to ten degrees. Wow. So if I got my thermostat set to uh, 68 degrees, it's going to be 73 degrees in my attic in the peak of summertime. Correct. That's pretty cool. The uh, I also noticed that the, in the ductwork that's run up through here, um, it's also inside the envelope of the house. I mean, the, the insulated envelope of the house. Is there any benefit to having it inside the envelope? Absolutely. Heat transfer is the direct correlation to the amount of surface area. If you take the surface area of all the ducts that ran through there, take your duct and cut it in half and open it up, and you look at all that surface area. Well, all that surface area is where heat. Uh, conditioned air as it goes through can lose or gain heat uh, depending on the weather, depending on whether it's hot, hot or cold air going through there. By putting everything inside the thermal envelope, you significantly reduce the ambient temperature or the temperature difference between the inside of the duct and the outside of the duct. So 
your ducts are being a lot more energy efficient. So 72 degree air pushing through your ductwork is actually traveling through 72 degree air outside of the ductwork. Or slightly higher or slightly lower, yes. But there's not a, it's not... It's not a 30 degrees difference. So, so in your attic, as in most homes, 72 degree air that's pushing through there to keep you cool isn't running through a 130 degree attic trying to keep you cool. Correct. And there's, and there's no loss of that cool air as it runs through your attic to blow inside of, of your home. Correct. Wow. All right. The, uh, you also mentioned to me before about the, the, the healthy aspect of foam insulation. Okay. Well, foam insulation, um, the product we use has zero off gas. So the well, only time when it off gas is during the installation phase. Uh, during the installation phase, the primary off gas is carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and water vapors. Uh, so there's no VOCs or no toxic chemicals. Uh, so it's good for the, the, the people, uh, it's good for the, the environment, uh, and it's definitely good for uh, the residents living in the house. But within 24 hours of the foam, there's actually zero detectable off gas coming off the foam. Uh, the American Lung Society endorses the foam. In addition, as you can tell, there's no uh, dust coming off this product. Right. So it makes for a healthier, cleaner house. No fiberglass, uh, no fiberglass blowing around like you like you find in Grandma's attic when you go up there and see uh, your old uh, your old toys covered in a, a layer of dust. Correct. Um, and the other thing that uh, unique about the foam is we incorporate the foam with your HVAC system. Foam insulation effectively stops over 95% of total heat transfer coming through. So we are able to downsize your HVAC system anywhere from 20 to 40%. So it saves money. It saves money on the construction side, but at the same time, your HVAC system is running more, a lot more efficiently. And so we are also bringing in a fresh air line from the outside, bringing in a small quantity of fresh air from the outside. The air is clean dehumidified before it's injected in the house and circulate throughout the house, creating a positive indoor pressure, keeping unwanted moist or dirty or pollinated air outside from coming in. Um, currently, all commercial buildings uses a fresh air system and the majority of the home up north uses a fresh air system because they're so much tighter and much more energy efficient and that's what we're utilize the best practices of the construction industry uh, to create healthy, energy efficient type of